Thank you for staying with News Central, a continuation of our coverage of the off-cycle elections, governorship election precisely, in Edo State. Welcome uh, to our time here with you. We've been following our colleague, uh, bringing you all the latest information as regards where we are at. My name is Felicity Ezewige. And I'm Likon Onobanjo. And yes, we have been uh, following through with the um, election in Edo State, the gubernatorial poll, um, all the way from its commencement up to this time, where we understand about um, 16 local governments ha in terms of results um, have been collated. And we understand that um, there are figures on ground that helps us understand where the trajectory um, is right now now as regards some um, the results that have trickled in but then uh, Felicity we've seen a lot of reactions coming from the different camps most mm -hmm. uh, notably uh, the APC and the PDP um, <laughs> as regards the election and um, one thing that borders the mind is um, the fact that uh, most of these people on both sides seem not to be um, quite agreeing in terms of the outcome of the elections with the fact that um, some people feel okay there's a particular Cam that is trying to influence the eventual outcome, and the other side saying, "Hey, whatever it is that comes out, we we'll take it." And you know, it, the, the bottom line is, it doesn't seem as though what is playing out is a true reflection of what people were actually anticipating. Depending and that's on where the problem of who you are speaking with. If you're speaking with the APC, um, some of the conversation I've seen so mm -hmm. far, they will tell you there have not been a lot of noise mm -hmm. today from the APC, more from the PDP. They had a presser earlier today. They talked about their dissatisfaction so far, mm -hmm. intimidation. Uh, you know, they talked about a, a whole lot of and, things. And, and the possibility of the uh, current governor, you know, trying to influence the outcome of the election. Yeah, when some people have alleged that that presser center. was primarily to clear the air mm -hmm. as regards that. But that remains to be confirmed uh, by um, uh, members of the uh, PDP. Uh, just to also highlight for those that are just uh, tuning in, that the um, collation was proposed to start at 10 a.m. this morning. Unfortunately, it started at 11.45. I checked because I was, everybody was anticipating, and then conversations were ongoing, waiting mm. for the opening. And then when it did open today, there's been um, fluidity mm -hmm. of the... Uh, announcement of all the local government. Of course, we've had um, party agents come up to challenge some of the results that was presented. But the most interesting thing, we're waiting for just two local government mm. uh, to have the final results for the governorship election uh, in Edo State. And that's what we're waiting. The uh, collision center will yeah. reopen at 5 p.m. today. Yes, uh, and, and according to the um, statistics that we have, uh, we also understand that the APC has gone at so far, uh, gone at so far uh, 244,549 uh, votes, while the PDP has about 213,437 votes, uh, with the Labour Party garnering about 13,348 votes. Um, of course, uh, we also understand that the APC is currently leading in 11 local government um, areas. Uh, the PDP five local government areas while the Labour Party um, is yet to clinch any of the um, local government areas and that is what we have for now and of course we have people as guests who will be talking to us as well. Yes and results. some of the issues we'll be bringing to them is uh, some of the allegations across board but primarily from the PDP. Um, I watched a conversation earlier where one of the agents was talking about the collation being done not at the ward level, but taking right off uh, to the state, mm -hmm. jumping protocol. That's what um, um, he said. And he also talked about manufactured results and the skepticism to some of the results that were being announced at the um, uh, collation center. Uh, we also have the press earlier. We'll be picking our guests' thoughts on that. And our guest on this part of our coverage of the governorship election is Vincent Otaopo. 
political analyst. Vincent, I hope I got that right. Yes, you did. You did. You tried. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us. Um, you've been following what's been going on in Edo State. What's your perception as to um, the allegations that we have at the moment that uh, coalition, I mean, the results were taken straight from the units, uh, from the wards to the state, and the coalition just failed all protocol? Uh, yes, um, I, I think uh, that the allegation uh, from the uh, PDP state collection agent uh, is quite heavy. It is quite heavy. Uh, that will constitute a gross uh, violation of the provisions of the Electoral Act. Because you must know that the elections are conducted and won at the polling unit level where votes are generated. It is not at the state collection center, local government collection center award that the elections are conducted. So elections uh, process is like a pyramid. You know, it starts from the pr process of uh, voting at the polling unit where people converge to vote. And uh, after voting, they transmit the result as required by section 65, 62 of the Electoral Act uh, to the uh, IREV. Now, uh, there and then, the, the, the results are uh, computed and entered into from EC8A, which is the result, result declaration at the unit level. After which, the results will be accompanied, the presiding officer with the party agent and security agencies under Section 61 of the Electoral Act must accompany the results up to the uh, World Collusion Center after which the, the result will be collected across all the pooling units uh, making up the world and they now produce what they call what we call from ECHB. After the ECHB, the world collection, the uh, agent and um, the party agents and the presiding officer will, will accompany the results also to the local government collection center. Uh, we are in all the world within the collection, uh, local government will now have a collection point and uh, we now produce, they will now produce from EC8C, which is local, local government uh, declaration. Now, it is after that they now move to the state, which what we saw earlier on. They will, you know, they will say they will resume around 5 or p.m. or thereabout. Now, after the collection at the, uh, the local government will now come and declare the result, after they have declared all their results, then there will be a state collection agent who will now collate all the results and enter it into to produce from EC8D. After the collection of EC8D, that is the completion of the collection process. The result will now be entered into from EC8E, which is the declaration of a result from which they will now be able to make a, a declaration and they may make a return and declare the winner of the process. So it is a breach of the electoral process, which I said is like a pyramid for Collation not to have occurred at the ward level, at the pulling unit level, uh, local ward level, local government level. If that allegation is something to go by, is as, as heavy and weighty as it is, then that means that the election process in the Edo State must have been uh, flawed by that singular uh, uh, act. Because uh, it, I, I wonder how someone will go to the election petition tribunal. It is grand also, it's also grand, uh, grand of, it's also considered a grand of. Uh, uh, a, a, a filing election, a grant for filing petition at the election petition tribunal because uh, the, the, the section 135, 133, 134, and 135 of the Electoral Act has created who can, section 133, who can present a petition, 133 and 134 of the Electoral Act at the uh, pet election petition tribunal. The political party that participated at the election and their candidates can pre uh, present jointly or severally a petition. Uh, that one, the election, the fellow who was declared winner was at, at the time of the declaration not qualified to have contested the election. That is a qualification issue. Two, that uh, the, the fellow who was declared winner did not score, score, did not score the highest number of votes cast at the election and upon which he was a declared winner. And two, that the election, three, that the election was marred with irregularities and non-compliance with substantial uh, provisions of the Electoral Act. Okay. Now, these are grounds. Uh, uh, okay, uh, Vincent.
Yeah, we actually appreciate um, your response. I I'd like you to just uh, pause with your thoughts uh, for a while. Uh, let's bring uh, Bob Manuel Upoku into this. Uh, he's a political scientist in Edo State. Uh, Bob Manuel Upoku, thank you so much for joining us. We also have um, Amadine Ui. Uh, he is on the ground in Edo State currently. Thank you. My name is Bob Manuel Upoku. Okay, uh, before we come to our guest, let's uh, get... Uh, What's the latest from your end? We know at the moment that uh, collision has been paused, but do you have any information as to whether the expected results have been taken to the collision center or any response from the wreck so far? Okay, we've been having several conversations with uh, people on ground who participated uh, in the poll yesterday. And we just want to first take this gentleman before we summarize uh, statements that he's been making. Oh, can we get to know your name? Uh, I'm Sifiano Hassan, or Dio by name. Okay, okay uh, Hassan, can you give us an overview of the election uh, yesterday? You said you were you are an agent in one of the polling units. Can we know the party mm. and what you observed on ground? Okay, okay. I'm, I'm a, a Labour Party member and uh, I voted to my own party, which is Labour. But with my point of view of what happened yesterday, the election was successful. There was nothing like violence, there was nothing like fights, there was nothing like trouble. And uh, everybody voted in pigs, I live feed in pigs. Because what really made the election to go well was that because of the money that evolved, all that political party were sharing money, why all that political party will now have money to share. So as a result of that, that shows that the party goes well. Nothing like fight, nothing like war. So that is how we voted yesterday. Now, can we know the political parties? You said that you witnessed several political parties sharing money and the amount. Can you just tell us? Uh, the several political, the political party that we are sharing money, BDP also share, but it's not up to the amount of APC. So as a result of that, because of the money, APC, uh, even PDP members and uh, Labour Party members and other political members follow money. They began to vote for money. They were voting for money, not for any other thing. They were voting for money because of the money that they were giving people in the field. They decided to follow APC and vote for APC. In my own poly booth, in my own poly booth, APC got 185. Then YPDP got eight. Y Labour get, got uh, uh, three. So for that, I say, well, anyway, we thank God because this is open election. Uh -huh. This is open ballot box. It's not a secret election. So we did this successfully, and there was enough security, and there is nothing like somebody that we say want to cough. Nobody cough, and nobody make any noise. So for that, we thank God for the peaceful election that happened. Uh, Asan, uh, Asan, I asked you a question earlier on about uh, uh, allegations by some members of PDP that the election was rigged. What was your, what is your take on that? A lecture was never ringing, I do not etc. It do not west and I do not east. Nothing like a lecture that was ring. Those things they did it, the INEC officials, they did everything openly. Everybody will be there. Everybody was there. APC was there, PDP was there. Other political parties were there. They counted their paper, they see those ones. Labor uh, APC are leading. APC are leading. In all poly boots, APC are leading. So they were all aware. So they couldn't even call because they witnessed it by themselves. But all I, all, I, all I know is that APC is still cook and brought food for the agent, whether you are from whether you are from APC agent or from PDP. They don't care to know. They're cheerful for everybody in the field yesterday. But they were taking care of people. And uh, they did not make people too hungry like that. So, but I know that my people here, our people in the donut here, they voted for money. So I will say the truth, that is my eyes witness. Even, even security is witness what happened. So there's nothing like allegation, they were there. Uh -huh. And somebody that, that was angry, you cannot ask the person to go and do this. He will be even angry with you. Even some of my members, I saw them voting for uh, APC. So I cannot go closer to them and ask them why are they doing this. So everybody with his own choice, but I vote for my right. And I know my right was APC. Uh, PDP, uh, sorry, I mean uh, Labour Party. So that is why I voted for Labour, but I did not vote for any other party. Thank you very much, Hassan.
uh, you have heard it loud and clear. Hassan was an agent in one of the polling units, and I brought him on because uh, earlier on uh, we heard we heard that several members of the PDP in Benin Edo State have thrown allegations that the votes were rigged. Hassan, who is from the Labour Party, says no that what happened yesterday was vote trading, vote buying and vote selling. That apart from that, nobody manipulated figures, nobody snagged the ballot boxes. So if anybody says that those figures were changed in Benin or, or wherever, that they are false. Uh, Abadin, um, I, I still have my outstanding question that you haven't responded to, but I think it's fair for us at this point to point out that he is talking about Edo not. Um, he can't possibly be speaking for the whole of Edo State. Can you clarify that? Because that's what we watched. He said where he was at, that the accusations were inaccurate. It doesn't automatically mean that uh, maybe the PDP or the Labour Party or even the APC's allegations are false. Uh, so let's go back to the update as to what to expect in, at 5 p.m. First off, the... the Collation was supposed to start at um, 10 a.m. this morning, but it was delayed by almost two hours, an hour um, uh, 40, 45, minutes 40 minutes or minutes so. Yeah. Um, what are the likelihood that we're going to experience that um, again for us to continue? Now, uh, from what we have gotten uh, from those at the collation center, it seems uh, INEC is hell-bent on concluding the process. 16 local governments have been announced out of 18. But also, let me clarify the position you earlier stated. Hassan, said, Hassan was talking strictly about Edo North because I'm, right now I'm standing in Auchi, just like the capital of Edo North. So his position is not across the entire, Edo, the entire length and breadth of Edo State. He was only insisting on his area of influence, which was in Edo, saying that this is what he observed in Edo North. But for the collation process, we are hoping that they will come back by 5 p.m., announce the two uh, remaining local government areas, and then declare the winner of the poll. All right, thank you um, very much, um, Austin Azu, for the updates from your end. Uh, definitely, okay. we that, will that, that's connect with Ahmedin. you. Oh, Ahmedin, Ahmedin. Rather. I guess <laughs> so, um, he's <laughs> rushing the gun because we yeah. actually have um, uh, Austin Azu. So, yes, yeah, standing yeah, I understand. By to Ahmedin, speak thank to you. Us. <laughs> Uh, okay, so at this point, um, let's quickly um, connect with uh, us in our zoo so that um, we can also get a feel from what is happening at its end. We understand that it's at the uh, collation center. And um, like uh, Felicity had said, uh, we're hoping that on or before 5 p.m., this um, collation exercise will be concluded. But then we need to get the live feeds now. Austin, you're welcome and you have the floor. All right, okay. while we're waiting to um, establish audio with uh, Austin, let's bring Bob in. Bob, I think I'll ask you the same question I asked my colleague about the timing. I mean, at some point, people were happy that uh, the results were being reeled out as quickly as possible and people airing their grievances. And then there was this pause, uh, a pause that's lasted for two hours. How optimistic are you that we will resume at 5 p.m. as promised by uh, the resident electoral commissioner? Well, I think um, so far so good. Um... So uh, yesterday I was here and I did give kudos to INEC, the security agencies, and all actors involved in the organization of the 2024 Edo gubernatorial election. I am certain they will keep to their time. However, we should understand that uh, where humans are involved or activities of this nature, there should be one or two lapses. Even flights are canceled or rescheduled for one or two hours or 45 minutes. So we should expect that an issue that has to do with the uh, the will of the people, one must uh, exercise patience, caution, and restraint. And in, in saying that, I'm saying that we can, of course, wait till that um, period. If there are no issues, INEP, of course, will not take such a, a break. And I think this is the first time, if you check from... Uh, 1999 to date. This is the first time that INEC is actually reeling out it, uh, 16 local government 
results in a stretch without uh, hitches. So it shows that a significant improvement in INEC organization and of course in her engagement, in her institutional engagement. So as we proceed further, one would say that uh, we would just say INEC is growing bigger and better. That is the best uh, right, word well. to use. Because Okay. I've been following up the development. This is the first time in our nascent democracy, especially as regards to those states, that INEC will just reel out 16 local governments in a stretch. So I think it's good for us to wait for them. All right, uh, Bob Amano, thank you very much. Uh, we'll go back to um, Austin Azu now to um, understand what's happening uh, at the Coalition Center. Austin, if you can hear us, you can actually um, go ahead and give us the updates. All right, currently we are still at the collation center here in INEC head office in Benin. And uh, you can see a lot of persons are still keeping watch, waiting for the INEC officials to resume the collation to end the process of electing and announcing a new governor that will take over from Godwin Obaseki. However, we have a line of uh, respondents who will share more light to us how the process has been going. Please, uh, let's meet you. Yes, hello. All right, please tell us your name and uh, tell us the process so far about your observation. Well, my name is uh, Nohua Baonyi. Uh, honestly, uh, for what I've observed so far uh, in the presence of the INEC officials, I, I don't think there's anything fishy. I believe things are going smoothly and they will have the final say. But we are here to observe to see that there's peace. Everything just go well. And I represent initiative against human rights abuse and total. Uh, for now, for so far word of the result that have been announced, things are going on simultaneously. Until the final result, the INEC have the final say. You are. All right, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, well, meanwhile, the two local governments being awaited uh, within the Benin Municipal, so Oredo and Ipeboka, which are within the uh, Benin City Municipal. So we have one of the party agents here to bring us to speed about his own observation. Please tell us your name and tell us uh, what you have observed so far about the uh, result that has been announced. Wait, I'm Honorable Bright by name, Omoru Giva. Where the, the quality exercise is going away, uh, I think it's very transparent. This is the first, this is the first experience and uh, we shall be able to experience, I think, is the best way of this result going. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we have another uh, party agent. Uh, so please tell us your name and uh, tell us about what you have observed so yeah, far. My about. Name is uh, President Ibokha of uh, the Zenith Labour Party. We have observed that uh, election conducted in Isako, which is like five hours, 30 minutes away from Benin, has been, has been read. The result has been declared. And the result of the election here, where we are here, taking this interview from, has seen not be released. The, uh, the REC, the state collection officer, who is an academic professor, have told us that they are still collecting results on the field. And it's, it's, it's quite a disdain that uh, the country has metamorphosed a situation whereby you can even use a professor to lie. You can use a pastor to lie. So that's where we are. So they are the, the on break now for the next three hours to release the result to us of what happened in this very place where this interview is taking place. And it's, it's, it's very surprising. So that's where we are. So for us, declaring a governor after this election is like uh, governor imposed and not governor elect. That's it. But however, what do you think that uh, might be going on right now? Because it seems like what you said right now, uh, Oredo is within Benin Municipal and uh, other local government areas far away, far about uh, those in the River Area Resort has been brought here. What do you think could be responsible for the delay? Yeah, what's responsible for the delay is that because they know that it's a court-bound dispute, because the election is neck to neck, so they are trying to doctor, to document and repair whatever that they have. Uh, because of course, you know that uh, election, election rigging, has to, you have to have consultants. So the consultants have to look at the papers that are churning out. But not really that they can declare uh, APC the winner of uh, Oredo and Bobaha, but there's a way that they can reduce the number because there's a constitutional conflict that can arise with the numbers of votes that came from Oredo and Bobaha is so high. So you have a local government, you have a, a, a party who wins with eight local governments and has a high, higher number. And you have a party who wins with 10 local government and has lesser numbers. So they are trying to work on that so that they won't bring another constitutional in Bruglo. 
actually your party went in for this election but says uh, it seems that your party is not part of the three leading political parties so far announced are you satisfied with that yes uh, we we are also aggrieved primarily that our votes and that of our sister party the labor party are found in the basket of the apc that's our grievance so our grievance is not that we can be declared the winner our grievance is that we have been shortchanged and being shortchanged is not something good we must fight and we must check the process for purpose of accountability and transparency we probably heard about uh, vote buying in some police units in some local governments does it mean that your party didn't throw out money to buy votes uh, our party uh, don't have money we, we managed to get money to as logistic support for our agents who were sent to various units. Surprisingly, some of our agents did not also vote for us with what the result is showing. That also means that the, our agents were also bought. So vote buying in this election is a, one of the biggest deficits of the 2024 election. The ICPC, the FCC, they were all sleeping and this thing was going on. Also considering the economy malaise, the poverty in the land. So people were ready to take money, but we expected that the institutions budgeted for to tame anti graft to tame corruption, they all went asleep. So the, one of the greatest deficits is not just that the government imposed will be announced, it's also that it has the highest level of impunity in vote buying. All right, before I let you go, it seems your party already been aggrieved about uh, the outcome of the election. What other means will you be seeking after the announcement of the results? Hey, thank you very much. Our party, independently, Zeni Labour Party, will challenge the outcome of this election in the tribunal. We don't know of other parties what they will do, but we, as Zeni Labour Party, will challenge it. Not because we want to be declared the winner, but we want to keep those in the hands of our fair on their toes, as I have mentioned before just for the purpose of accountability and transparency. People, any evil done should be redressed and should not be left unattended to. Okay, your name again? My name is President Ike Boka, ZLP State Coalition Officer. Thank you for having me. All right, thank you very much. Martin, uh, okay, please, before you let him go, um, I have a question. Um, in, in case you cannot answer it, I want to you to clarify for us which are the two local governments that we are still awaiting results from. Is it um, Oredo oh, and Esako East or Ikoboka that I heard you uh, mention? And while you are that, give us an idea of the distance between the collation center and this place. It's actually Oredo local governments and Ikoboka local governments and these two local governments are rightly domiciled within the Benin City Municipal. So it's not far away from the uh, headquarters here, and that's the concern that the ZLP uh, party agent has raised here currently. That if you can get other results from other local government far away, as far in the Rivera area and hinterlands, they wonder why we have not got get you know received any of the received the uh, results from uh, the local government that are closer by within this area. Okay, uh, uh, that clarification uh, was uh, quite urgent, so we know why and uh, what we are waiting for. Uh, I guess it's fair now to let him go. President, thank you for speaking with us. And Austin, thank you. I'm sure we'll be back with you in no time. All right, without go um, on a short break, we'll still have more to talk about as regards all that is spilling out, uh, looking at the Edo uh, gubernatorial um, election. While we are at the collation phase, we are getting different stories from different angles, and we will be putting all these into perspective with our guests to get their feels from it. That will be after the short timeout. To stay with us. Mm -hmm. All right, you're watching the ballot. It decides on New Central Television, and we have been um, looking at the situation as regards the collection exercise. That's the phase we are in uh, in Edo State, and we've been getting fillers from uh, different areas from our reporters, um, from indigents in the state party agents talking about um, uh, the. Uh, situations uh, that seem not to have gone down well with a couple of them, with some other people saying that. You know the election was free and fair, and um, whatever results uh, that it will that will be announced 
uh, by the um, electoral umpire in the state would be embraced by all, but that, not, that does not seem to resonate uh, with um, some others who have a reservation about this. Uh, we have uh, Vincent Otakupo, who is a political analyst. Um, he has been with us all the while while we started, and uh, Bob Mano Umoru, who is a political scientist in Edo State. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your patience. All right, let me come back to you, Vincent, and just take you up on a submission by the uh, Zenit Labour Party um, agent at the Collation Center. He said two things. Um, I'd like you to respond first to the first one. He talked about still collecting results at this hour, you know, um, pending confirmation, of course. But what would be your concern that at the point where 16 um, local government have already been announced, we still have two outstanding and collation going on? At, what is the implication of that, really? So undermine the, the, the whole process as it were. It is a violation of the provisions of the Electoral Act for the, for the state collection uh, officer to announce those results, uh, the returning officer to announce those results from local government, whereas there are so many other local, two local government uh, pending, uh, which they have not uh, collected. Uh, what is uh, local government collection? Just the world coming together to give the report, the result from their different world, and you put it in a in a result sheet in, in a form called uh, from EC8. Uh, D. So uh, the allegation from the person that spoke for uh, the, the, uh, from I think from Zenit Labour Party or something that uh, the, the, these two local governments are even very close to the city centre. You know there are some local governments as far as five hours drive, and they have declared those ones. Uh, and uh, you know how much more the ones close to them. So it is much to be desired. In the, it goes to, to to the roots of the the whole entire process. It goes to the credibility of the process. It goes to the the, the question as to whether the election was actually free, fair, credible, and uh, transparent. So INEC uh, must be able to live above some of this suspicion, which has been there over the years, 2023 election, 2019 election, 2015 election, 2011 election. There has been all this suspicion, counter suspicion, or no, you know, been there. So INEC must be able in this age to get it right. It is not a good thing that there is a, this, some of this insinuation will still be going on at this age. And that's also grounded part of the uh, condition to approach the election petition tribunal to nullify the exercise. But I want to encourage the fellow that uh, spoke before on behalf of the uh, Zeni Labour Party and indeed other party agents who may not be uh, who may not uh, agree with the outcome of the election, especially as the as the, as the collection is being done, an announcement of those results are being done, to object. The law requires you to object because once the session sixty five says that the result declared by the returning officer is final. Nobody All right, Vincent, can could you hold on to your thoughts for uh, uh, Could you just hold on for a second? Uh, I just want to inform our viewers that the pictures that are coming up on your screen right now is from a protest by the People's Democratic Party in front of INEC office in um, Benin City, I presume, at this time. That's um, um, pictures, live pictures. Uh, collision is still ongoing post at the moment but there's obviously dissatisfaction with the entire exercise we are yet to get audio from the uh, comments that's been um, put out there and the reason for the protest as soon as we have that we will come back um, with uh, that update uh, but sorry Vincent we had to update our viewers on what they were seeing on their screen so go ahead and just uh, complete your thoughts there Okay, so section 65 has said, gives the returning officer the final position. He said, the result as uh, declared by the final, by the returning officer is final and cannot be obtained by any person or authority except through the process of uh, the election petition tribunal's jurisdiction under section 135, 133, 134, 135 of the Electoral Act and section 285 of the Council of Nigeria as amended for the Act. 
uh, number 21 of 2017, as it were. So uh, that is with respect to a mark by lot cancelled and the, uh, the declaration and return made with respect to uh, the election that is by the returning officer. Those things are, those actions taken by the returning officer are final. So, but before that is done, it is left for them to make those uh, objections known, which I know the, the PDP agent have always uh, stood up at the at the end of every local government uh, uh, declare, uh, you know, announcement of results to say that we are, they are objecting. That is in tandem with the law, so as to ground that uh, uh, jurisdiction of the, the tribunal and to warrant to invoke and reap the benefit and the remedy of Section 65 provides, so which says that where there is objection that the uh, INEC should call for a review, may apply a review of the process within seven days. So that may be grand enough for them to have a review, but as the case may be, they have to look at the weight of the allegation and what uh, grounded the objection as the case may be. But this whole thing goes to what we have been uh, yearning for, what we have been conversing and advocating for a clear amendment, further amendment of the Electoral Act. I know the amendment electoral act 2022 is a step forward uh, outside beyond what we had in 20, uh, 2010 electoral act now the beavers we must know is not contained in it's not recognized under the electoral act present electoral act 2022 and that's why you see sometimes i could choose the uh, uh, collection of results at the the use of beavers at local government at the what uh, sorry pulling unit level uh, uh, some places, uh, uh, Ubivas is not working, did not, we, we are not used. Some places, uh, 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 it was Vincent, not working. Vincent, let me, let and me, let me interject again and just make a confirmation. Are, are you referencing Beavers and IREVs or just Beavers? Uh, one would think that the Beavers had some legitimacy at this point. No, I'm telling you what the law provides, that there is no mention of Beavers is not contained in the Electoral Act. Beavers is only contained in the INEC guideline and manuals, which INEC has power to draw their manual and guideline. When you look at the judgment of the court coming out from the, especially the last uh, governorship uh, election, the last governorship uh, ju uh, judgment of the Supreme Court on uh, Kogi, Imo, and Bayasa, and uh, and even last year elections, you know, the court are tied, their arms and whips are, are tied because the beavers, when you say the, in your petition that the uh, INEC declared the result outside what is contained in the beavers and the beavers was no use, you will see, say, we see have this uh, counter opinion that the beavers is not in the electoral art. Oh, okay. the so that's why there is a further amendment we're expecting that, that it should be amended to include beavers in the electoral act outside what is contained in the guideline. Uh, then so, so, there um, should be says... mandatory use electronic transmission, electronic transmission of election results should be made mandatory. As it were, elections are collected manually and uh, electronically. All right, All right Vincent, I, I know if we let you, you will, you will continue Vincent. to school us on the, you know, the, the proper way to do things. But <laughs> let's also right. bring in Bob to the conversation. Uh, uh, of course. Um, so, uh, Bob Manuel, I'd like you to, you know, I'd like to get your feels as regards um, the position of the EFCC and IPCPC uh, in this case. Uh, before uh, the election began, uh, the body had come out to say that its officials will be on ground to monitor the situation and ensure that there are no issues of vote buying, vote intimidation, and um, all what not as regards um, situations or acts that might in some way um, skew um, the votes or the, the, the decisions of the people to actually you know, elect their choice at this particular um, ballot. But then we still saw cases of votes buying. Even some party agents were said to also have uh, been cash induced um, in some way to subvert uh, the uh, will of the party they were meant to represent. So uh, in this time and age, the 21st century, we're talking about um, electoral processes in Nigeria. Are these situations that we cannot wish away? Uh, well, thank you so much. Um, I had the one, the, your correspondent in Auchi was talking to the Labour Party agent who alleged that there were some level or a high level of uh, vote buying. And then he further went to say that the election was free, fair, or uh, credible. It was peaceful, so to say, that uh, nobody was intimidated and the rest of it. 
Well, uh, on the issue of vote buying, I think it is clearly the responsibility of the EFCC and ICPC to look into that, especially when somebody is alleging with sufficient evidence. But you cannot allege without a burden of proof, of proving it either through videos, pictures, or whatever, to say that X, Y, Z, uh, party or party A or party B, brought in money either in bags or either by transfer or by anything to induce people against their wish. And um, if you are saying that, at the moment it was happening, you also said the policemen were on ground, the military men were on ground. Did you report to the policemen? Because the police were not just there to uh, ensure the peaceful conduct. Every process the police were to pass through too, to ensure that the law is followed to the latter. And good to note that every unit, every unit there had a good number of police officers and of course the military standing at a distance to ensure that lives and others were fully protected, including those who were the ad hoc staffs. Or Bob, I think uh, he's got... Okay, uh, Bob, see if you can unmute quickly. You mistakenly click on mute. Okay, uh, we will come back to Bob. Let's uh, switch back to Vincent. And I, I want to stay with you on the uh, Zenith uh, Labour Party agent comments. And I'm taking it again in contrast to what a civil society observer that um, Austin spoke to uh, talked about. The observer says, Everything seems transparent, um, nothing to criticize at the moment. While the Zenith Labor Party agent says the whole process is cut bound, if nothing else, to establish their grievance. What's your thinking here? Two people experiencing the same thing and having very opposing views. Yes, um, I will. I will speak out of experience as a litigation lawyer, uh, you know, specialized in the field of election related uh, matters, uh, petition at the, you know, at the election matters, as the case may be. I will go with the position of the Labour Party, uh, sorry, Zenith Labour Party uh, agent. I will go with the position. Proposition. I will not go, personally, I will not go with the observer's uh, position because there are issues and uh, suspicion, uh, allegations and suspicions that uh, have been leveled or characterized with the activities of observers. Some people go to monitor elections just to go and make money. Some people go there for what they will gain. Some people go there and uh, some, some persons are being paid to just put up a favorable report. I'm telling you out of experience favorable report that we favor SYZ political party. So in most cases, except international observers, any other observatory agencies and all those stuff, some are Yaga is good and some other one, but there very many of them, they, they are always, uh, 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 they don't give a, a, a you know, credible uh, report. So I will go with uh, what the Zeni Labour Party agent said. And uh, it goes to undermine, or, sorry, underscore the importance for INEC to do better. Uh, the, the law, the, inter, the, the Hassan, who spoke from uh, which your Europe, I saw something for, through your correspondent, is also positioned, the man was just speaking innocently, <laughs> contradictory. It was uh, free, it was okay, the security agencies were watching everything, uh, the uh, PDP prepared, but the APC people paid higher, blah, 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 you know, that kind of thing. He was speaking innocently. And that goes to show that it's more or less, it was all about trading. It's all about uh, vote buying. It's all about who can pay the, high, the highest bidder will carry the day. That is uh, against the provisions of the law. That is not the wish of the people. When people are induced to select, not to elect, to select uh, whoever the uh, the, you know, they wish to through the inducement and what have you. And that goes what we call uh, stomach infrastructure process of uh, elections in Nigeria. Now, in most cases, uh, there's an accusation that you see a, a, a house close by the, uh, the polling unit and some persons will walk in there, smile and come out and come and vote. At that point of voting, there's somebody monitoring where they put. In some cases, they say you have to vote first and then uh, you go inside. You know, the one other reporter said it, you know, you go there and you come out, you know, that kind of thing. We had it before. So these are issues 
But the law has penalized, has made a provision with respect to some of these electoral offenses. When you look at section 123 of the Electoral Act, it states about what ought not to be done at the polling unit at the point of election. One, use of uh, uh, t shirt uh, stickers of a political party. Then section 137, 127 states have state about undue influence. If you use money, give money to somebody to induce the person to vote or to not to vote for another political party or candidate, you have breached the law. I think a one year imprisonment or uh, uh, one million naira uh, uh, fine, as the case may be. Then threatening violence under section 128 of the electoral act is also an offense when you're threatening violence to people uh as some cases I, when i appeared on another television in earlier today uh, a reporter said uh, that uh, at a one police unit somebody came and said i shouted there uh, twenty thousand naira vote for us twenty thousand you know that kind of thing so these are all provided in the electoral act okay. and you can see people or uh, you know breaching these provisions of the law and uh, sometimes they go unpunished because okay, of so, coverage uh, Vincent, and the political weight around them. All right, all right Vincent, that, that, yes. that's well noted. Uh, let's uh, bring Bob Manuel back into this now. What we're seeing now is that we understand uh, the position of the law, but the issues around the law and the Constitution is the interpretation and the enforcement or the implementation of the law in situations like this. Um, earlier on, you were talking about um, vote buying and the fact that um, the EFCC or the arms of governments or representations of governments that should deal with um, electoral offenses while on the spot, on ground, where these situations do occur, seem not to be optimal in terms of dispensing their duties. Now, when we continue to have situations like this and insufficiencies on the part of um, the law coming to play, um, how do we now bring sanity to Nigeria's electoral process? to bring sanity to the Nigeria electoral process is to follow the law to the latter. See, let me tell you one thing about the Nigerian political system. I've been involved in prosecuting election and observing elections since 1999. There is never a time all these political actors, observers, party agents, and all of that, there's never a time that INEC or the court can satisfy them. There's never. Politicians complain and berate the process when it doesn't favor them. I am a politician. I just told you I'm a political analyst and I'm a politician. I'm a card-carrying member of a political party, PDP to be precise. There is never a time that political actors will accept defeat. They will always complain of the process. And let me tell you, when the process gets to court, when the judgment doesn't favor them, it is the judge that takes the lashes. I will give you many and many examples if we want to go on. So the best way to go is to allow INET to do what is needful. I just said it over and over again yesterday, and I'm repeating it today. The process that INEC engaged in this 2024 is the best I've ever seen in all their outing. INEC so um, I, I want to, um, I, I know you're a political analyst as well, uh, just to chip into what you said. I'm trying to get your perspective on the press earlier today where the governor explained his presence at the state um, um, INEC office. And of course, the comments about the fact that the presser was too early in the day, considering that uh, coalition centers had not even opened uh, at that hour. The question is, what was the governor doing in that environment at that odd hour? As, a, as an interest party, it's not supposed to be there. It, as at the time the governor was there, it was too early for anybody to start mounting pressure on the INEC and start, of course, uh, instigating uh, violence or a violent process in this whole thing. What INEC have done from the beginning till this moment, for me, I have won elections and I have lost elections. I never did what was best for the people according to the constitution. Our politicians, both at PDP, APC, Labour Party, across board, should learn to trust the process and not dictate for the process that already has an existing constitution covering it. We should play politics by its rule. We should play by the rule of the constitution. Uh, but your party doesn't seem, your, your party, let me interject again. I'm trying to look at the, um, the highlights I took from the presser earlier today. It says, uh, REC has no business moving collation center. Is that a view you also hold or you feel 
that uh, that statement might have been incorrect by the PDP? It was very, very incorrect. In, um, in a donut, I monitored all the activities in a donut yesterday. For example, in Estaco Central, they moved all results from the, all the units under the ward to the ward collision center. They collated and went to the all right, Bob, oh. uh, we seem to be having a challenge with your internet. Uh, I mean, there's a lot to complain about about this process, but mm. there are some things that went right. We will come back to the complaints, of course, because the idea of talking about these issues is to chat a way forward, hopefully, if we're listening. Uh, but there was something um, um, I personally observed. I hadn't seen reports of it anywhere, and that is no ballot box snatching this time around. We did not hear Togs went here, took the ballot box and absconded. Largely, though they started a little late, it was peaceful. We did not, aside from those who were trying to uh, peddle, um, uh, sell uh, by votes rather, yeah. uh, we did not hear of any lies or anybody being injured. Vincent, is that maybe a plus for INEC in the conduct of elections that we should amplify a little at this time? Yes, I, 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 I believe so. I believe so, uh, you know, with the presence of the security. But you know the, what the, uh, the guy that spoke through your correspondence there about vote buying, I cannot uh, play down on it. It's also a good uh, thing that uh, INEC, I think uh, they have done credibly well in the exercise, but they need to do more. They need to do more, especially uh, this issue of uh, collation, collation. Uh, national ballot buses, uh, the, as it were, used to be the order of the day. But the politicians have mastered the game now. It, why do you need to carry on a snap ballot bus when you can just uh, wait everything? Let them do what they want to do. Let's wait for them at the collection center. <laughs> Let's wait for them at the collection center. Let them do what do you have to do, Togre. Let's. Uh, they have mastered the game. Yes, they are very, very smart, and uh, and uh, that what is uh, playing out. But I believe that uh, the, 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 the process is not completely flawed. I think there are some credibility in what they have done, uh, but they, they, you know, they should be also able to carry all everybody along. I want to speak also on this issue of um, the press uh, release by the governor of uh, Fintry. I, I don't think uh, that it is right. The immunity enjoyed by the governor under Section 308 of the Constitution does not include uh, unofficial and the actions that the no, inimical are incompatible not believe the with governor the provisions of the listed, uh, No, I, did not, I do not believe the presser was uh, the, uh, from what I saw of it, uh, he did not actually declare any results. He just clarified his presence at INEC um, headquarters. I think that was someone else, um, a, a governor of another state that I actually. Um, and then he corrected himself and said it was local governments where they have won as already. At that time. Yes, yes, as at that time. So uh, let's see if we have okay. Bob back and let him just uh, conclude his thoughts. The network doesn't seem to be liking um, him too much today. <laughs> uh, Bob, go ahead and conclude your thoughts, please. All right, so I was saying that politicians should learn to trust the process rather than conclude before the conclusion of the process. What INEC did yesterday was something we all should commend. INEC is not perfect, but day by day, year in, year out, there is an improvement on everything they do. So um, in the issue of how when you talk about ballot box planting and all the rest of it, yes, in this election, at least from 1990 date, it has not been recorded. Now, let me tell you what the security agent did. Um, there was a, a place at the Ogbe Stadium where it was rumored that talks were kept in that place. The security agent went there. They searched the nooks and cranny of Benin City and Major City, and talks were disarmed. This election was protected. So we have to give kudos to the federal government for providing security, and of course to INEC, and of course to the people. Yes, what you cannot take away in the whole of this process was that there was high voter apathy, which resulted to the low turn out, uh, low turn out on uh, the result that you are saying. Compared to previous years, even compared to the 2023 uh, election, you will see it. So the best way for us to instill hope in the process is for politicians to take it cool, bring it down. 
learn to uh, to win and learn to lose. That is the rule of the game. While on the part of INEC, they should look at loose ends and tighten all those loose ends. For example, like around. All right. Uh, okay, well, well, Such things should be looked into. Those are things that we should say. Okay, uh, back to Those Vincent now. Uh, let's okay. just um, look at uh, the blame trades um, set to be ongoing between um, these two parties. Now, we just, we've been able to establish the fact that um, there's a protest uh, by PDP supporters uh, at the uh, INEC office right there yeah. uh, in Edo State. Okay, and before you go on, let me quickly mm. just um, um, highlight here that it's about uh, seven minutes gone past five. Um, previously, we were told that the coalition will recommence at 5 o'clock. It's now past 5. We're keeping our eyes out. Um, if we uh, get information that they've started, of course, we will pause our conversation and join uh, the coalition. But for now, there is no word yet. Uh, coalition has not resumed, so we continue um, our evaluation of the process. All right, definitely. Um, so, um, as I was saying, uh, Vincent, uh, we saw footage of um, some PDP supporters uh, right there in front of the INEC office, um, you know, expressing their grievances as regards uh, to which um, edge this particular um, result seems to be tilting, uh, you know, saying that they are not confident uh, as regards um, what the um, INEC in the States is doing in terms of the results being churned out. Now, we see these reservations and we have also seen APC supporters come out to say that the governor of the state, a PDP governor for that matter, having to go to um, the INEC office was trying in a way to influence the outcome um, of this uh, particular election. So when we continue to have uh, these blame trades and this back and forth um, in an election like this, uh, what does it tell you as regards um, the role of INEC itself and the ability of this particular body uh, to come out with a result that actually resonates resonates with the people and also speaks to uh, they, this particular body being trusted by the people uh, according to what um, they were mandated to do. It is the constitutional right of people of Nigeria to converge, congregate, assemble and association or demonstrate uh, by me, which is uh, by means of uh, uh, showcasing or registering their grievances. But they are the only uh, uh, constraint there yeah, that uh, every demonstration or protest must be done within the ambit of the law. Section 40, Section 37, 38, 39, 41 of the Constitution give the citizens right to freedom of assembly, Section 38, and Section 41 give them right to uh, movement. But you know, under Section 45 of the Constitution, it says that the right of freedom of movement, association, as the case may be granted under those sections, can be can be restricted by a law reasonable, justifiable in a democratic uh, society for reasons for public safety, public order, public morality, uh, for security, and for the overriding purpose of protecting the rights of uh, other persons. So they have right to protest, but I believe that uh, protesting on the street of Benin City is not the proper way to challenge the outcome of uh, an election. So what would have been the proper way? Under the electoral act. What would have been the proper the way? The proper way is... The proper way is for them to articulate their, their grievances through a letter and make sure it's submitted and stamped at the INEC office. So it can form basis of uh, what they will attach at their, uh, to their petition if they want to approach the election petition tribunal. Another way is that their state coalition agents, which is the, who is there, have also st stood up to raise objection when those results are being pronounced. And that have activated the requirement under Section 65 of the Electoral Act. And what it requires INEC to do in such cases to uh, critically evaluate the challenges and the objections and the counter objection as the case may be. Maybe call for a review, review the process of within seven, suspend the whole thing uh, inconclusive and review the process of within seven days as required under Section 65 of the Electoral Act. Now, but you know, that, that must be done before the returning officer makes the pronouncement because once that is done, that is final and the only person that can uh, challenge that outcome is through a uh, election petition tribunal through the court of law. So that is that. Then the aspect of the governor going to the INEC uh, office by whatever means, for whatever purpose, 
is not uh, reckoned with in a democratic society like ours, especially at that wee hour of the night when the collation process uh, uh, was being expected or is still was still going on. It is not good for him to go there because he was not he's not uh, standing for in for election. He's not a candidate or agent of of the PDP. So, but uh, using state apparatus and using state measures and means to undermine that process or whatever means, it could also be suspected to be uh, intrusion or sabotage uh, the, right. of, of the process. So it All is right, not Vincent. good. And that is also provocative and inciting on the, on the other opponents uh, to also do the same thing. So that is that. But on the part of INEC, there is this expectation on the part of INEC that INEC must get it right. I All right, so uh, Vincent, let's so bring in Bob and, again and, and give him some talking uh, time. Um, uh, Bob, if you can hear me, you are in a dose state. Let me get that clear first. Are you in a dose state at the moment? Yes, I'm in a dose state at the moment. Okay, so um, I, I, that is your best place to respond to this. Um, I've watched conversations earlier that talked about underage voting in a dose state. Um, did you see that play out anywhere, or did you hear? that they were underage of voting. And if that is the case, what worries you about that? Considering what we've talked about repeatedly about the dangers of underage voting. Well, in all sincerity, in all sincerity, all the places I monitored and went through, there was nothing like underage voting. The young people I saw, both male and female, were within the age bracket of uh, what an electorate or a qualified electorate should be. They, 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 they are within the franchise age. So I didn't see anything like on the age uh, voting. And I think that is what I noticed. There was nothing like on okay. the age voting. The most thing, the critical thing there that I know is of note is the voters' apathy. That cannot be taken away. It was so high yesterday. Uh, so, uh, what, what, about, uh, what about the accusation by uh, PDP chieftain in the state as regards uh, thumb printing um, of uh, ballot papers and bypassing the BVAS, uh, a top you know, PDP uh, person in Edo State confirmed that. Did you also, by chance, um, witness that too? Okay. Uh, perhaps, maybe, I would not say, uh, I would not disregard or uh, discharge his comments. Maybe it happened where he was. But what I noticed in my place yesterday was, I think the whole of uh, my unit we were like um, 300, um, 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 300 uh, voters there. Though the unit is almost a thousand because of the voters that party, about 300 persons turned out. Of that 300, only two unique cases that the beavers couldn't capture. And that was because it refused to verify them. So they asked both of them to wait. One young man and uh, a lady. Later they tried again. They, it didn't go through. So they asked both of them, you can't vote today because your, the, uh, the beavers refused or couldn't uh, verify your identity. They named everything tallies with the card, but yet they didn't. And immediately they finished. what they were doing was they were counting the number of persons the beavers captured. I think there is a provision on that machine. And the number of ballot papers used. Bob, uh, and the these are pictures. Paper, everything was counted. Sorry to interject. I'm looking at the pictures on the screen now. There are some young children. It, that person looks quite young in the queue. At some point, they, they alleged that they were um, standing in for the elderly or those who could not stand. But if you're looking at that now, uh, maybe we should shift yeah. this to Vincent and just get his perspective on the subject of on the age voting, voting. Mm. because i have heard correspondents say they saw young people who should not be on the queue be on the queue and cast their vote vincent i'm taking the question to you now what is your thinking about it do you think there is some credibility uh, to the you know the the allegations that children were voting without control in the Edo State Governorship election? Yes, this uh, reoccurrence uh, incidences of uh, underage voting uh, was, you know, critically uh, mad or, uh, you know, affected the credibility or the outcome of the 2023 
presidential and governorship elections in Nigeria. And today we have, yesterday we have, you know, there's also that uh, suspicion and not suspicion uh, from what was played, the script played now, uh, you could see the possibility the underage people queuing up to actually vote. Uh, remove that uh, uh, <laughs> defense of standing in for some elderly person who could not stand. It is quite uh, bad, it is quite unfortunate that in our democratic uh, journey, we have it, uh, we have descended to this uh, level of uh, rascality, abuse of process, abuse of uh, uh, provisions of the law, and neglect rules and regulations. The political parties and their political gladiators and the candidate must play by the rules of the game. INEC must be able to live above the board to protect the, and, and the guarantee the integrity of their process. Section 52 or 53, I think so, of the Electoral Act have uh, provided for underage voting and criminalized that any polling unit where underage persons uh, are allowed to vote, the presiding officer there has committed offense. So uh, we need to be practicalizing some of these issues and they uh, going direct to serve as a deterrent because we cannot just be talking and talking and talking every now and then. We are those persons queued up and voted the person of that there should be arrested. There should be a petition where he, the person should be arrested. First, I think the consequences is to two, 12 months imprisonment or 1 million naira, six months uh, option, six months imprisonment option or fine. I think uh, 100,000 the case may be. So it is already provided in the Electoral Act and it's a criminal offense. Not to the people, you can arrest those people, but you cannot arrest them because they are minors. But the returning officer who, pretends, who pretended and saw them and allowed them to vote, is answerable to the law and must be arrested as the case may be. The pro right. the, 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 our electoral process must be allowed to grow beyond this point. Because right, it is painful what is happening uh, or what has happened update. in the state. Um, governor, governor, six governors of, uh, of uh, APC are in a those state with national chairman. BDP had their almost six governors also in a those state where, for what? To do I what? Uh, all right. Um, I think you've made a point there. We will we will come back to you and uh, continue to pursue that line of thought. But just to update our viewers, that uh, our producers just um, uh, whispered that there is a possibility they are reconvening at the collation uh, center. Uh, I think those are live <laughs> pictures. Uh, there's every possibility that uh, the process will commence um, not too long uh, from now. But let's continue our conversation until we get the prompt that we should go over to our correspondent and the continued uh, coverage of that collation of results. Uh, while we're doing that, I want to uh, come to... Bob? Yeah, Bob. Bob yeah, okay. I think uh, you have a question. Yes, let, let me just quickly, you know, still talking about um, electoral infractions, uh, Bob. Now, Aswe Godalo is the governorship candidate uh, of the PDP, you know, cited some instances as regards his reservation looking at the election in the state. And, and he talked about complicity uh, on the part of police officers and also that some party, PDP party agents, uh, were, were denied access to the collation center. You said you actually monitored the process in Edo State uh, as regards how the election, you know, panned out. Uh, and I'd like to find out because th there was a statement he made and he said this might be the worst election in terms of Nigeria's history. He made that statement and I'd like to put that to you and get your own view uh, as regards that statement and what played out in terms of uh, maybe inhibitions on the part of those party agents uh, representing the PDP. Bob Manuel. Okay, I guess we just lost communication mm. with uh, Bob okay, Manuel let, again. Let's but then, hope he will uh, get course, back in and then we'll put that question <laughs> to him. But in the meantime, I'd like to wrap up a lot of questions in one. And this time I'm taking it to the INEX doorstep. After all, we are going to be focusing on them again uh, for the next um, hour or so. Underage voting, over voting, vote buying. Uh, so far, what I have seen is an acknowledgement from INEC about over voting in one or two places. Other than that, no comment about actions that need to be taken. Um, a lot of the time, we say some of these responsibilities should be taken away uh, from INEC. 
Okay, I'm being told that uh, the collation process has reconvened and we will be switching over to continue uh, bringing you updates on what is happening live. We just have two, um, uh, two local government, two local areas, government now. areas left. When that is done, well, just might be here <laughs> <laughs> still. All right. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Professor Oluro Timiadibawale Kemiki. I'm the local government coalition officer for Oredo local government. Oredo local government has 12 words. The summary of the results are as follows. Total number of registered voters, 356242. 356242. Number of accredited voters, 64802. 64802. Votes as recorded by parties. A, hey, please. Um, sorry, bro. Registered voters is what? Three, five, six, two, okay. four, two. Okay. Okay. I didn't hear it. Sorry about that. Please. Thank you, sir. Party A. A, three, eight. A, A, six, three. Six, three. A, A, C, five, eight. Five, eight. A, D, C, one, nine, two. A, D, C, one, nine, two. A D P nine two A D P nine two A P C three zero seven eight zero three zero seven eight zero Abga five two three five two three APL three two three two APP two three two three B five nine five nine 
LP 11 by the EO that I should call my agent that they were about to start collecting all of the results from my local government. My agent has since been here. I called the EO severally for my agent to be granted access to join them in this collection that was never supposed to happen here according to INEC laws, INEC regulations. He has been outside and he is still outside. He hasn't been granted access into these premises. And then you collect a result that we are not involved in. We won this election in Oredo by miles. Miles. How would in this city, metropolitan city, APC get these votes? It's not possible. Our people are very, very civilized people. What they have done here, I will reveal to you when we continue the last for the last local government, and I will point it out to you. This is disgraceful. This is shameful, to say the least. It's shameful if this is how this kind of state or this kind of country we are going to bequeath to our children. They would ask us questions one day, all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then, my name is uh, President I, for the Zenit Labour Party. I'm a bit uh, more confused because you have not asked the officer why he delayed. Because the, uh, the fully unit, is, the area is collated, it's just like a true stove, where five hours journey has delivered his own result. He's just coming. And when I saw him, I said, ah, oh, they didn't use a professor. So when he introduced him as a professor, I became shocked. And I'm doing my PhD, and I'm, I've just told myself, I don't need to be a professor. He is very disgraceful. He should explain why the delay. Ah, Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you. It is noted. Thank you, sir. 
My name is Jared Tenebe. I represent APC here. I'm surprised when the agent of PDP keep uh, mentioning APC. And openly just now he said he said that this is a metropolitan city that is surprised that APC we have votes like this. And he is from the same local government. I can make both to tell you that all through the campaign, he was nowhere to be found because he is alleged to be one of those people that killed the police at the airport and he has been on the run. And for the information, please, please I must say this, please, 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 I have to say this, please, I have to say this, please, 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 I have to say this, please, I am begging you, please, I have to say this because I also have to let the police know that after the collision, he is one of those that is alleged to have killed that police at the airport. Please, 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 please. please. I think uh, party agents, please, we can do better. Um, what we should be doing here is to raise issues concerning results. I think we should avoid issues that are not in tandem with what we are doing, please. Please, please, please. Um, the party agent for PDP, please except if you have something new you are not to respond to this please i'm begging you please please something different not personal please okay sir. please so that we don't waste time here please thank you sir i will not join issues with um someone that is a beneficiary of this fraud is an active participant of this. I, when it goes low, I will go high. Sir, the Oredo results, I can see a column signed by PDP here. Our agent is outside. Our agent has not had access to this building since these results were moved from Oredo, yet from the words, the results only two wards out of 12 got to Oredo Collation Center. The remaining wards were brought here directly. The agent, the Oredo local government area agent, has not had access to this building and make bold to say. So, this fraud, I repeat, this manufacturing of votes continues. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, please, like I said before, I want us to be very, very matured and uh, diplomatic in this case. Like I said, please, I want to repeat it. There are questions that have been raised. The truth about it is that if really we know our role here, this is not a court of law. I just want to attend to some of the issues the last man raised. It is not a court of law where somebody will be kept in a box for interrogation. Our simple job is for us to collect results. And you can see fundamental questions we have been asking here. Those are the only questions that we can ask as far as this, uh, this exercise is concerned. And this exercise must continue. It has to go. We must do it to complete what we are supposed to do here. So any other issue, please, like I said before, document this and make it available to our enemy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, please. Thank you. Any other observation? All right. Uh, LG Coalition Officer, please send out the results. Thank you. Which other? Okay. Is the uh, Okoba Okoba here? Okoba Okoba local government? Is it Okoba? 
I've said, please permit, don't, don't, don't mind me. I, I'm not too familiar with, uh, please. Ekoba. Eh? Ekoba. Just bear with me, please. So long as you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Thank you. Thank you. Um, gentlemen and ladies, please let me show you something here. This is the result sheet. It's still sealed. Um, what I want to simply do is open this in your presence and then we begin to record results because if we stay here and say we want to go on recess again, it means we will have to extend this exercise till tomorrow. So please, with your permission, it's sealed. It is sealed. I'm going to open it before everybody here and then we will now begin to record the results that are already on the screen. And uh, what we have now right here on screen is um, the transmission of the results gotten so far from the different local government areas in Edo State where votes were cast, uh, being transmitted uh, into um, the form that will determine, uh, of course, it would be the form or the platform that will be used to actually determine the announcement of the results, uh, which will also help us know who actually would be the next governor in Edo State. And that's what we have right here on screen. Uh, of course, uh, we had um, already local government area results uh, come in uh, about a couple of minutes ago with the APC uh, garnering about 30,780 votes. Uh, the PDP had 24,938 votes, while the um, Labour Party had 5,300 and. Uh, uh, 89 votes, and according to what we understand, the number of registered voters three, uh, 356,242 accredited, uh, 64,802, the total valid votes, uh, 62,703 uh, rejected votes, 1,339, and the total votes cast set to be valid. 64,042. So we're actually still expecting one more result from Ekoboka um, local government area. We'll hope that uh, we'll get details of that before the final summation of the results and the eventual announcements. Yeah, just to wrap up our session with you, um, the interesting comments were made earlier uh, when the results were being presented for Oredo, um, the PDP alleged and the APC also alleged, uh, but the intriguing part was the APC's agent uh, comment had more to do with accusing um, uh, the PDP agent, uh, Tony Ioha, of being involved in the killing of a police officer. You could even hear the slight uh, shock that was expressed by those who were there, and of course the wreck tried to draw him uh, to attention, call him to order, uh, so to speak. Uh, we don't know what Ipobaka results will be like, but we're hopeful that uh, this exercise that has started so peacefully since yesterday will be concluded peacefully as well. And uh, the usual mantra these days is, if you are unpleased, go to the courts. <laughs> uh, well, but, but then, uh, but then uh, Felicity, before, before we draw to a close, uh, one part uh, that I was sharing with you off camera was um, how Vincent, one of our guests, uh, documented the electoral process uh, as regards um, the votes at the polling units and how the results will be transmitted to the IRF before it's taken to the World Collation Center where uh, all forms will be filled and all party agents will be a part of the process. From that point, it gets to the local government uh, co collation center before it's now brought to the state collation center uh, to have the final results. And that was one of the um, reservations or observations that um, the PDP agents raised saying that is agents 
not was allowed. not granted access to participate in the coalition exercise up to this point uh, where we have um, the state's uh, the, the coalition uh, you know, exercise going on. And uh, that actually, according to some people, will talk about um, the electoral guidelines and INEC also following through what it has stipulated in its laws or edicts, if I could put it that way, as regards how elections should be conducted. And of course, um, it would also mean that what probably played out in 2023 general elections where the INEC officer had come out to say that, you know, beavers would be used, IREV will be used, those are the technologies provided. But then we didn't see that play out because there were technical glitches. Yeah, but Vincent did say that uh, the legal standing is not uh, yet solidified. Um, you, you can use it as guide for hmm. transparency purposes, but it's not in the law at the moment. So um, if you want to use that as reference, mm. uh, you might have a hard time proving your case in, in court. court. But he did yeah. say, like the PDP were protesting earlier at INEC office, that they will be better served if they go to court, make a petition or make a statement that can be used as evidence in court to say this is our concern mm. and this is what we're here for. Mm -hmm. um, it's unfortunate that... Um, uh, oftentimes, uh, as we saw through the campaign, it was not an issue-based campaign, mm -hmm. as always. It was more of a back-and-forth of name-calling, uh, mud-slinging, accusations mm -hmm. um, uh, flying up and down. But this is the apex of the whole thing. Uh, we have about five minutes before it is 6 p.m. Uh, we're still bringing you live coverage from Benin City of the coalition of the Edo governorship election. Uh, but before we go off, uh, the news is at 6, if we, um, yes. if we still have this on. Uh, but just to thank our guests that were here with us earlier, Vincent Otao uh, he was a guest, a political analyst. Uh, Bob Manuel Mopu was also here uh, with us, a political scientist from Edo State. We say thank you so much um, to everyone that has helped us cook this, and we hope to continue to bring the details as they trickle in as regards well the um, collation and the final uh, conclusion of the um, Edo election. Uh, my name is Lee Kondo Banjo. It was nice doing this with. Yes, Felicity is a weekend. I would say may the best man win, of but course. that comment is not legit in my view today. <laughs> so we'll just say, let's see what happens with the final result and who is declared winner mm. of the Edo governorship election. Stay with News Central. We have so much more yet to come. <laughs>